Hello guys, this is me Anil Kalsani. I'm your mainframe trainer and this video is regarding the interview uh, question and answers that we are continuing. This is the second video. We already have one more video before and that was in English language and this second video is also in English language. The people who uh, do want in a like the new language guys they are already has been uploaded uh, we are uploading only the english language question and answers in this series so if you want in telugu language you can still check in my old series we already have covered all these questions in telugu now we are covering them in the english language now the people who already subscribed to my channel guys please really thank you for that and i'll share some more good knowledge to you in this video and the people who are seeing for the first time guys uh, listen to the whole video if you get any new knowledge from my video please do like this uh, video to and please do subscribe the channel as well for getting more updates so let's go ahead uh, let's see a couple of more questions in this video regarding the interview questions on cobalt dv2 module so in today's the first question what we had on the row number 11 guys is the compilation process of cobalt and dv2 so this is one of the favorite interview question in any interviews guys okay so if they are asking you a cobalt questions cobalt db2 questions the pre-compilation process and bind process is one of the primary question they will ask you now you need to prepare this question in better way and go this is an expected question like if you are going for an exam in a school days guys one of your friend says that anil this is a 10 marks question now, when your friend says that it is 10 marks question, you will not ignore it. You will prepare that one first and then later things later, right? Same thing here. As a trainer, I know uh, this particular question is very common. You also know this point. So you better learn this topic called Cobalt DB2 pre-compilation and bind process. Now, it's a very big topic. Okay. It's a very big topic to explain. Okay. So in short, if somebody asked me, Anil, can you explain me pre-compilation process in the interview? Okay, so I would say that for Cobalt DB2 program, we will be using a two-step process. One is the pre-compilation process in that we'll be using Cobalt DB2 code as input, Cobalt DB2 code as input. And after the pre-compilation, we will be getting the load module and DBRM as output. Now using the DBRM, I'll go for the second step, which is called as bind process. In the bind process, I'll be using DBRM as input and I'll be getting the package and I'll connect the package to the plan as output. So once the pre-compilation bind process is completed, we'll be getting COBOL load module and for DB2 queries, we'll be getting a plan. Using load and plan, I'll be executing my program. So that is a short answer that you can tell in the interview. But they may ask you a couple of more questions related to package, related to the plan, bind parameters, what happens in pre-compilation, how the system will comment the code, replace the code. All these questions will be expected. So like I said, this is a 10 marks question. If you say the word which I told you, the answer which I told in two to three lines, you'll be getting only two marks. Now remaining eight marks questions you need to prepare as well. There is an excellent video in our training uh, videos. I mean, in our YouTube channel, we already have a video to explain pre-compilation and bind process. Uh, please check them. Please learn the way I train it. You have any questions, put it in the comment. You get any questions from your mind, put it in the comment box. I will see them and I'll add the questions into this Excel sheet as well. Okay. So that's your first question about pre-compilation expected question. Now the second question is if you don't want to use a cursor, what is the SQL statement we can use to retrieve only one row? Now this is very simple things. Okay. If at all I want to get only one row from a DB2 table, I can write a select query. I can also use a cursor. But if it is only for one row, we'll always use select query only. And if it is for multiple rows, then we'll use cursor always. So this is the easy question. Then we can go ahead for next one. What will happen to the cursor at a time of commit and rollback? Now, this question is related to some other topic. Okay. But the answer in a shortcut. Okay. If I want to ask you the question like this and I want to get the answer in shortcut. So I would say whenever you use a commit in your COBOL DB2 program and if there is any cursor is defined, then the cursor will be getting closed. So commit 
will close the cursor. Rollback will do nothing, guys. Okay, I have tested this one. So rollback has no effect on your cursors at all. So only in the case of commit, the cursors will be closed and you need to use a withhold option to keep the cursor on open status. Okay, cursor withhold option is required. So rollback, nothing will happen. Commit, cursor will get close. Now, what is the next question? Can we check SQL code at open cursor? Yes, for any SQL statement like open cursor or closed cursor, select query, insert query or commit or anything like that, you will be getting a written code. Okay, that's called state, uh, SQL code. So you can check the SQL code. If it is zero, the cursor got opened successfully. If not, you'll be getting cursor uh, failure cases. So like minus five zero or two or five zero three kind of errors will come. Now, what will happen if you use cursor withhold option? Okay, so this is a, a continuation question, I guess, which has written here. So uh, if we use cursor withhold option, so in the program, even if you make a commit, the cursor can stay as opened and it won't be getting closed automatically if a commit is performed. So using withhold option, you can keep the cursor in open status. Now I see the 16th question has been uh, deleted accidentally. So I'll take uh, another question from below and I'll place it over here. Take the format, make it true. So, I have I just copy pasted another question randomly. So different SQL codes. Now this is not a kind of question that would I say. Maybe they say that uh, Anil, uh, tell me what is your uh, what SQL code? What SQL code you seen in your project? Now this kind of question might be expected here. So this is a very good question because it's a choice. They are not asking you a particular number or any SQL code. They are asking you whatever you know, tell me. So such questions, please be handy with good answers. Don't tell that I got a kind of error that never comes. Okay, let's say if you say that a minus 206 or 205. Now that is a mistake of spellings, guys. That is not the answer you need to tell. You need to choose either minus 305 error, minus 811 error, or minus 803 error duplicate that error kind of things you can tell in the interview but in generally what happens is one of the common SQL error code that you'll always see is minus 904 very commonly it's not a very big thing okay 904 SQL code is not a big error or a problematical error nothing much uh, important for that but one of the common SQL code that you see in the project is minus 904, which is referred as resource unavailable. So maybe your table is in the load process and it is not available. And another program is running parallelly and got an SQL query on the table. It will fail with minus 904, which is referred as resource unavailable. We don't do anything in this case. Just wait for the load complete and rerun the process. So this is one of the easy things that you can tell in the interview. And if you want to tell some tough points, then you need to choose the level minus 305 or 811 or minus 180 minus uh, 803. These kind of tough numbers also you can choose if you have a good example in your hand. If you don't have any example, then choose minus 904 because everybody knows in their project in a DB2 module, everybody knows what is 904. You can tell that answer very easily. Now, the next question what we had here is, what are the ways to close the cursor other than close cursor? Now, this is a similar, I think these particular questions are related to cursor only. So as I just told you guys, whenever you use a commit in the program, the cursor will be closed. Whenever your program gets abandoned, also the cursor will be closed. Whenever you use a closed cursor also, the cursor will be closed. Now, does the rollback have any impact on the withhold option? Like I said, rollback has no impact. I checked in my software. Okay, I have a mainframe software in that I have checked this rollback scenario. It has no effects on the cursors at all. So you can ignore that point. It won't close also. It won't close the cursor even if you give a rollback command or query in the program. 
So to close the cursor, you have either close cursor statement or you can make a commit without using withhold option or you can, if your program abends anyway, automatically the cursor will be closed. Now, updatable cursors for update. Okay, so the question might be like this. Explain what is updatable cursor. Okay, what is updatable cursor? Now, generally cursors, some of you might have only used cursor for fetching the data with a select query fetching the data but cursors can also be used for update as well cursors can also be used for update as well so you can get the cursor for selecting where you will be using for fetch only okay there is an option called for fetch only which you can use only for reading purpose and there is another option called for update off so when you are using for update off you are telling the system that you want to update the data after fetching as well. So this for update of for fetch only, you need to mention in the declare statement of your uh, cursor and that particular cursor will consider as updatable cursor. Now, then what is the static and dynamic call difference and which is better faster? Now, I think this is a, a not a COBOL DB2 question. This is a kind of COBOL question here. So what is a static and dynamic call? If they ask me static and dynamic cursor, then it is a DB2 question, but they are asking us static and dynamic call. Now this is also in COBOL, this is a kind of uh, uh, 10 marks question story guys, which is very important. As per static and dynamic call, there are three differences you can tell always, okay? There are only three differences that you can tell always in the in interview. One is regarding the syntax, Okay, whenever somebody asks me, Anil, what's the difference in static and dynamic call? My answer would be, okay, how I will tell the answer, I say that in static call, we use a syntax where we provide the program name as a constant in single quotes. For dynamic call, we provide the program name using a variable. So that is the syntax difference. Second point is on the compilation, I will say that in static call, we need to combine the sub program and main program load together and create a single load module. For dynamic call, the sub program load module and dynamic load module, the main program load module and the sub program load module need not to be combined. Then the third point is on the change coins of in case of changes happens in sub program. We need to compile sub program and main program if it is a static call program. If it is a dynamic call, then only sub program compilation is required. Main program compilation is not at all required there. So these are the three differences that you can tell in the interview. But be prepared for more questions on this topic. This is really an important topic in the project. And asking this important topic in interview is not a bad thing. So this is an expected as well. Now, if somebody asks me, Anil, static or dynamic, which one you will choose? So with my experience and with my understanding of existing projects, guys, I say we use static call always. Okay, if somebody asks me to write a sub program, somebody is asking me, Anil, whether you write a static or dynamic call, I would say that we'll be using only static call in all the cases and static call is what the faster in our consideration as well. Now, most people in the interview, they may debate saying that no, Anil, dynamic is better. Uh, we can, we don't need to compile the main program like that. So that is a kind of uh, different story, guys. That is not realistic in the project. When you see any project programs, any regular sub programs are, which are used in the project, guys, they all will be using static call. So the programs which are written by very uh, intelligent people, guys, they are using static call. And that's what we need to tell in the intro as well. Okay. Now, the last question what we had in this sequence of this video, guys, is what is plan and package? Now, like I said, in the first portion only, we got that course point, that compilation of COBOL and DB2 program. The same thing here, plan and package. Now, this is also a part of your 10 marks question. And before I answer this question, if you had a little bit knowledge in this part, if you got one small knowledge, one bit of knowledge in this particular question so far you can simply click on the button like button there if you are not my subscriber you can uh, see my all videos there are hundreds of videos with very good knowledge 
you, you can see any video randomly you, you pick up any video from my training videos and you see that video if you found it very interesting then come back and subscribe okay this is not the only video i want you to check check any video in those 100 videos if you find a video any randomly open it see the video for the whole if you got some new knowledge in that yes then please subscribe to my channel as well okay and i won't be disturbing you guys okay just subscribing is not a disturbance to you it's just a uh, kind of uh, intimation that less lot of people are interested in my channel and that makes me to make more videos for you okay and if you have any questions any video that you want specifically put a uh, comment in here and if the video is already there then i'll share the link to you if the video is not there then we'll start preparing the videos for you as well guys okay so the last question is what is plan and package now this is one of the favorite question guys so basically you need to understand a line of sequence okay then only you'll understand this story so basically to understand to speak to the db2 guys you need a query okay to communicate with the db2 table data you need sql query but where is this sql query it is stored in your dbrm guys the sql query is stored in dbrm that is what we got in the pre-compilation step so when you read pre-compilation the query in the program has been extracted and stored in dbrm no dbrm no query guys so that is point one now the query what is there in the dbrm guys the query what is there in the dbrm is not the full length query okay it doesn't have the ssids it doesn't have the schema name it doesn't have the isolation locking scenarios everything the query that is written in the dbrm guys okay the query that is extracted and stored in dbrm guys is not the actual full length query so using package okay we create a package we create a package which contains required details to run a query full length okay so package is also a kind of half query you can assume like that meta query we call that as a meta query package contains meta details of your sql query required to run so both dbrm is a query and your package is also a meta query guys so both are queries only we cannot execute a query directly in the system without a connection to the db2 software okay without a connection to the db2 software you cannot execute the query which is stored in package plus dbrm only dbrm you cannot run the query only package you cannot run the query you need a package and dbrm together always so when you are doing bind process for the dbrm input which is your sql query we are creating meta details which is called a package so once you got the package what we do is we take this package and join with a plan we connect to a plan so in people will say that in simply we say plan contains packages plan contains packages package contains meta details about your sql query stored in dbrm query is always in dbrm guys query will not come to package package is only a meta details like a header okay a small header only so what is a plan anil okay there are two lines you need to tell in the intro plan contains packages that is first line plan is an executable component in db2 which connects to the db2 ssid subsystem id two points first point you need to tell plan contains package and plan is executable component in db2 which connects to the db2 system db2 subsystem so that it can talk to your table it can talk to your table data so dbrm package and plan on top of that plan you will have your db2 software okay db2 software is there you keep it in the top level from db2 software you need to take a line and connect to the plan from plan you need to take a line and connect to the package from the package you connect down to the dbrm in the dbrm you have your sql query so all are connected there okay all are connected for that particular case so these are the 10 questions for this video guys there are a lot many questions okay there are a lot many questions here we will discuss all the questions 
most of the questions in the interviews any interview will come from this excel sheet as well but this is only for cobalt db2 i have a lot of other tasks which deal with uh, cobalt jsl db2 separately as well so this 10 questions will be helping you to answer a couple of questions on compilations and the cursor part and rest of the questions will come back again in the next video so if you want to join my training guys we have a new batch starts every month okay every month one or two batches will be starting sometimes it will be morning sometimes it will be evening guys and if you need more details you can check the video description below if you need any questions if you need any career guidance you have kind of troubling your career you have a gap you are non-it person and trying to move to it person you are in mainframe operations and you want to be a developer you are in a testing and you want to be a developer so if you have a career related questions also you can put it in the uh, youtube comments if you want or else you can simply directly ping me on my whatsapp as well so if it is a general question guys i'll try to answer it and if you need training i can share more details about the training modules as well okay so see you then tomorrow or see you then for the next video on the another 10 more questions guys thank you